everyday life, work, push, drudgery, a constant flow of stimuli. Everyone wants everything and they want it now. Make it cheap, quick and good. People are increasingly insecure about the future. The feeling of desperation and anxiety is on the increase. Loneliness is more and more the reality of many. There are a few, however, who are never satisfied with everyday life. They are the ones who always set off in search of something different. They wish to detach themselves from the hardships of metropolitan life. All they need is a backpack, a laptop and a pair of hiking boots and the indispensable notebook. For them, a life of adventure begins. Disconnected and free from the burdens of everyday life and, of course, the security it may offer. Patrick Wayman used to be a travel blogger. He had given up a successful New York financial career for the excitement and joy of travel. I just got tired of my job. It's as simple as that. Figures, analyses, financial statements, to hell with this, I said one day. Why could I not do what I love doing? To break free from the constraints of civilization and explore and discover new places. To make everlasting friendships with strangers. I'm always on the lookout for something special. My readers are not interested in what has already been discovered. I get to go to places that no one has ever seen before. What gives me the greatest joy is to know that I can take other people with me on this journey, even if virtually. I can take along people who may not have the money, the time or the courage to find something extraordinary. With his helpers, Patrick has found the Vuzalas in the drought-stricken Republic of Bukaro, formerly known as the Kingdom of Bukaro. The Republic of Bukaro was the successor state of the former Kingdom of Bukaro. The southeast region, the home of the Vuzilas, was difficult to navigate due to the lack of roads and infrastructure. For most of the year, it used to be practically inaccessible. It is no surprise, therefore, that Westerners were rarely seen here. For the Vuzila tribe, water is vital. And this dependence is clearly reflected in many of their religious ceremonies. The most important rituals of the Vuzilas is the Banga. Banga is the source of life and knowledge. We have to show our respect to Banga so that he does not forget about us and continues to show us the water sources and helps protect our animals and our families. The Vuzalas believe that Banga can show them and lead them to the nearest water source. Dancing, singing and sacrifice is used to solicit their god to present them with life-giving water. Body painting is not only a spiritual act. It has a real function as it denotes one's place within the community. Those who have been shown water by Banga wear two stripes. Those who have been in battle wear three. The conquest of Bonga did not wear out at the coastlines of Africa. 
Helen had once used to run a yoga club in a downtown side street. For Helen, it is important to give exhausted and disappointed people by drudgery of everyday life a source of joy. This she used to call the me time. Everyone deserves 45 minutes of spirituality. Read Helen's slogan. However, since the very beginning of her time here, she had also been a keen Banga devotee. Banga is more than a mere ritual. It is a philosophy. It is a small island of peace amidst a sea of challenge. Spirituality. To become one with nature. To discover ourselves. Helen recognized the opportunity in Bongo. Ours is not the only Bonga studio in town. Lots of them have opened up, not only here, but overseas as well. It's all about Bonga today. All this is a gift from a tiny tribe deep in Africa. The Vuzelas. Indeed, Bonga studios were popping up everywhere, but the Banga fever was spreading beyond the doors of the studios. Publishers, TV channels and design houses were all queuing up to have their slice of the cake. Bonga presentation at corporate meetings were big. People began to see a way of life in Banga, a philosophy that transcended the monotony of everyday life. There was again something to look forward to, Banga parties, Banga festivals, all the social events organized by and thanks to the Banga studios. Yeah, that's it! Come on girls! Higher, Jennifer, higher! It was always busy at Helen's, one Banga class after the other. At this level, she needed conscious and thoughtful management. I'd kind of die without my diary. And at the same time, I provide work for heaps of people. Minda has a daily routine, her time is now structured. Through her work, she gets an almost direct experience of Banga. I mean, the poor thing has a right to it, hasn't she? After all, it is their religion. In the meantime, in the kingdom of Bukaro, the struggle between the wandering Vuzala livestock breeders and the settled and primarily crop-producing Nyanyanga had been intensifying. The war was fought over portable water. Minda was not the only one who escaped the bloody tribal wars. She may never recover from the trauma of losing her family, but each and every Banga session helped a little to shut out the horrific memories. If I like it here, we escaped the war with my mom, but in the end only I survived. The others were all lost at sea. I work as a cleaner, but I get to go to the Banga ceremonies. I owe this to Helen. I got a small piece of my home, my people and my family back. While the superpowers did not approve of the humanitarian catastrophe, no peacekeeping operations were deployed due to the scarcity of resources. The Separu family were the main clan in the Republic of Bukaro. They had belonged to the elite even in the kingdom. It was with considerable ambitions that the 37-year-old Gonkaka Separu had returned from London, suspending his university studies to what was then the kingdom of Bukaro, where the tribal war was escalating to new heights. 
While no one would question Gonkaka's high rank position, the local elite was not entirely in agreement of whether Gonkaka was indeed entitled to the power and position he held. In the end, it was Gonkaka himself who put an end to the debate. In the matter of a single night. Yeah, exactly. President Gonkaka had quickly restored order. The war between the Vuzelas and the Nyanyenga had come to an end. The country had suddenly opened up to the whole world. The newly found peace opened the way for spiritual tourism to flow into the land of the Vuzela. The people of all five continents were now allowed to partake in the Banga rituals. It was fantastic to see the increasing number of ceremonies in more and more villages across the country. Many Americans and Europeans had the opportunity to make it to these rituals. Bonga ceremonies had soared in number across the country and tourists were very much welcomed by the locals everywhere. Our shaman became very sick one night. In the evening he was still conducting the ritual and by the morning he was dead. But thanks to the kindness of President Gonkaka, a new shaman arrived and was quickly instated. The new shaman inherited the soul of the former one together with Panga. It was announced by the gender news that the president was saying that the new shaman was the only and only true messenger of Panga. He was educated, could even speak English. He was not to be called shaman, but venerable superior, and he was not to be spoken to. President Gonkaka did not use exclusively clean means to clinch and stay in power. The number of deaths among the Vuzela was high, and many had disappeared. He had sent his own trusted men to head the villages, and all former shamans from the ranks of the people had vanished. The role of the new shamans, the Gonkaka loyalists, was important. The Banga ceremonies had previously been completely closed to foreigners. It was believed that their gods had forbidden the presence of even other Vuzila tribes. The Gonkaka loyalist respectful superiors, however, started to let foreigners, pilgrims and the curious partake in the ceremonies. This has attracted a great many that could smell the scent of money from afar or were seeking to become curious. What's more, the ceremonies were increasingly and soon exclusively designed to attract the slot. This is totally cool, a full ritual, I say. Hey man, I'm telling you, you immediately see the light after coming to Bonga just once. The silky night is filled with the scent of spice, music plays, you're sipping bonga tea, and the chicks are dancing. The gender Mary appeared in the village and said that from now on, outsiders will also be coming to Banga. Visitors. They lived in the presidential bungalow. Imagine, it had running water inside the house. Indeed. The Gonkaka let power take over and the subsequent stability came at a price. Economic resources were concentrated in the hands of a narrow circle made up Gonkaka's family and friends. The local population had essentially become enslaved to serving tourism. They were organizing the Banga ceremonies, collected the garbage left behind by the pilgrims, carried their luggage and serve them in every imaginable way. I paid 250 bucks, that's 170,000 dinars, and the venerable superior will arrange a complete bonga ceremony for us anytime. If you're looking for a really lasting experience, don't go to Glastonbury or the Burning Man, come to the land of the Vuzela. Gonkaka's most important tactical step was to proclaim the Republic of Bukharo and call for general elections. At first, he was only seen as a decent negotiating partner, but within a year he had become a complete star. 
the recognition and popularity of the Republic of Bukharo increased worldwide. The country took out massive loan packages. Railway lines and airports were built. Given that the vast majority of the Vuzela were illiterate, they could only be engaged in dangerous and underpaid work. Gonkaka placed the Nyanyenga, the arch enemies of the Vuzela, in all mid management positions. The Nyanyenga could read and write. Their work and knowledge was essential to the progress of the new economy. A whole industry was built around Banga tourism accommodation, clubs, first aid and chill out places. The local bars were serving Banga tea in all flavors. Lemon was imported directly from southern Italy. This is the feeling I want to reproduce in my Banga studio. Music, dance, ecstasy, to ask the universe to show us the way to fresh water. For us, water is everything. Life and universe. Even a single water drop. I can help you find the Banga statuette that best fits your personality. Can you put it just a bit to the right? Yes, madame. include the improvement of education and the eradication of corruption. We have opened up our government news agency and we welcome journalists from all over the world. We would like to encourage them to visit us and to take a first-person view of the success and hospitality of the people of the Republic of Bukharo. Thanks to Gonkaka's excellent Western press reception, the public saw an alternative capitalist messiah in the African president. What Gonkaka, this African president who was, after all, a graduate of a London university was doing, was far more important than his words. Which I could also only agree with, by the way. You don't have to spend your life in a 9-to-5 drudgery when you have bonga. You can live without bonga, but it might just not be worth it. Maori massage and brain control had been replaced by yoga. Then the yoga saloons were replaced by Banga Studios. Poor Hyuga may also have deserved better than complete oblivion. And the Banga movement played a crucial role in this. Gonkaka, yes! Gonkaka for the Nobel Peace Prize! Of course! Yes, President Gonkaka was able to establish a functioning system. He learned to respond to the challenges of the developed world. And he's being taken seriously. He's showing us a realistic alternative to capitalism. Certainly to me. I am hoping that President Gonkaka will help me return to my home. He's a very good man. Maybe one of my aunt's family is still alive. However, the success of Banga had one day come to an end. A new messiah appeared on the eastern horizon of the western world. Global corporate giants are struggling with massive labor shortages. In order to remedy the situation, chilling out at Banga parties over the weekend was clearly not enough. Something else was needed. The labor market had identified a need for spiritual recreation that would promote and improve the attention span and efficiency of the workforce. Mindfulness is a philosophy. It permeates your whole life. It builds a connection between man and, and the universe. 
Of course, the Banga Salon will not close down. We are very much looking forward to welcome anyone who believes in the unification of body, soul and mind. Mindfulness, a magic spell, a craft, art. Mindfulness is life itself. At least, this is what Helen is saying. Helen, who not only saw the eternal beauty of life through mindfulness, but has also created a successful mindfulness business. I almost feel as I am becoming one with the present and the universe. I often say that while you may not be able to stop the waves, you can still learn to surf. It should be taught in schools. I'd make it part of the curriculum. Let those little guys experience what it's like to take responsibility for your actions. I am a travel blogger. My mission is to follow the origins of mindfulness. After the disappearance of Bonga, the collapse of lucrative tourism had led to an economic crisis and later to complete chaos in the Republic of Bukaro. In order to maintain order, President Gonkaka did not shy away from the use of tougher measures. Famine was widespread. In the end, Gonkaka crowned himself emperor to cement his position as leader. <laughs> 